Hi all, I'm David Bamman, and this is Copyright Session 10, Use Case Revisited. So let's return to our case study that we outlined at the very beginning. Gathering together a data set of materials of varying copyright status and allowing users to browse through works in this collection according to the geographical places that are mentioned within that. In this case, the user is searched for Paris, which brings up a selection of results where Paris is mentioned in text, and that Paris has been disambiguated to refer to Paris, France, and not Paris, Texas. The works that comprise this collection, again, have mixed copyright status. We might be relatively confident that works published in 1924 or earlier are in the public domain, while those published afterward are more likely to still be subject to copyright, right, unless those authors fail to comply with formalities uh, like registration during that time period. This collection also contains works of fiction. So not just purely factual content, but highly creative works. We can see this use case as being analogous to that of Google Books. Right? We're performing a transformation of the original, perhaps copyrighted text, in order to present information that's not directly accessible in any single work. Here, using geography as an organizing principle to index the entire collection. We use the entire work for the index that we are creating here, but only present small snippets from the original work, right? single sentences to users. The more complex component of this use case really comes in the goal of annotating selections from this data set. Right, having people mark where in the text a place is mentioned, and then publishing those annotations along with the original text. This requires its own fair use determination separate from that of the indexing and visualization use case. While in the former use case, only snippets are published, here we want to publish larger samples of text, right, perhaps a passage of 500 or even 1,000 words from a single novel. The first question to ask is, do we need to publish anything from the original text at all? Other alternatives may exist. Right? One possibility would be to only publish the annotations not linked to the original text, along with a description of the process by which another user could map those annotations back onto the original text. For example, publishing an annotation that says word 171 on page 37 in the original work is a place. If another user has access to the same copy of the original work and can follow your process to align an annotation with that work, then publishing the original work isn't necessary. In many cases, however, users simply don't have access to exactly the same copy of the original text that would make reproducibility possible. So let's consider that the annotations we create really do need to be published alongside their original work. What do we need to consider when making decisions about the scope of this project? As we've seen, there are a number of factors that determine whether this specific case study qualifies as an instance of fair use. So without making a recommendation for this case, we can outline the different factors that would go into a determination. First is the purpose and character of use. In this case, we could reasonably argue that the annotations we published alongside the original works are adding new meaning and expression to the original work. We're not simply republishing parts of the original works alone, but only to support the human judgments of place names we've layered on top of them. Second is the nature of the copyrighted work. Many of the works in the, this case study are works of fiction and so constitute creative works, which as we've seen, would be more likely to weigh against fair use. Third is the amount and, and substantiality of the samples we are considering publishing. How much can the samples we publish be seen as a substitute for the original copyrighted work? While the use of entire works may qualify for fair use, one main consideration is whether the amount of the work used is appropriate for the use. And for the task of enabling reproducibility of NER models, a smaller sample for example, publishing only 1% of a 100,000 word novel may be more reasonable than larger samples. And finally, what is the effect of publishing these samples on the market for the original work? We might imagine that publishing a large amount of a contemporary popular work like Harry Potter may impact its sales, while publishing smaller samples that don't get at the heart of the work would not. So these are some of the factors to weigh when deciding on the design of this particular project what data sources to use, and how to best use them to help realize the broader goals of the project. As we pointed out, there is risk in all decisions. 
For this particular project, we need to weigh the risks of using text in copyright with the risks of not using them. In this particular case, using text published after 1925 in a reasonable way enlarges the pool of sources beyond the primarily white and male authors represented in text published before that date. But hopefully this session will help give you some strategies for weighing and deciding upon these risks yourself.